Good evening, everyone. Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. Welcome to my craft room. Happy Saturday. Come on in, grab a beverage, relax, do little crafting stretches. <laughs> We're going to just hang out tonight and make some pretty things. Uh, I find that very relaxing to create things with my hands and I love doing it along with you. So uh, I see lots of people tuning in. Thanks so much. And I'm sorry, I was a couple of minutes late going live there. I was just trying to make sure that I had every, Ooh, Susan's making zucchini bread. Yummy. <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that all my connections were in so we didn't have any fuzziness or anything like that. So if you can let me know, if you can see me and hear me and all of those things, uh, Judy's here, Wanda's here, excellent Carol's here, Brenda, Melissa, Jill, Deanne, Mary, welcome. Sure, share, sure, share, probably share. I think we talked about this before. Share and Betty. Kay's here, Lorraine, Mary, Janine, Karen. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Rose. Hey, Carol Thompson. How are you? Um, Karen's here. Great. The gang's all here and then some. So if you're new watching for the first time, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We're um, Janine says I'm good. Thank you so much. Susan says I'm good. Excellent. Yay. I love it when technology is well behaved and <laughs> does what it's supposed to do. Doesn't always work out that way for me, does it? And I'll tell you right up front, we're casual here. <laughs> so um, I know just enough technology to be dangerous. So sometimes I bump the camera and I focus wrong and all of that. And you guys are really good about telling me when I uh, uh, make a boo-boo. So thank you. I appreciate it very much in a kind way. Of course, you're always so kind. So we're just going to relax and create tonight. Um, I don't know 100% what the finished project is going to look like because I am counting on you guys to help me decide uh, which papers we're going to use, which embossing folders, and so forth. So that just makes it more fun. And you guys always have some great ideas that I didn't even think of. So um so that's what we're going to do. Just hang out tonight and create. I did want to remind you, if you're not currently subscribed to my free project sheets, you can go to suestampfield.com and click on subscribe and you can uh, register for those uh, ideas to come in your inbox. I often uh, make project sheets based on what we make in some of these videos. So a uh, project sheet email went out yesterday and that featured um, the faux step fold card and then the... Um, the um, uh, soft seedlings, I was blanking out on the name, soft seedlings uh, fall card, uh, plus the, the uh, I did put in pictures and a brief description of the, um, the other one I made, which was uh, soft sea foam um, with that set. So like fall and not fall, <laughs> but both with the same stamp set. So uh, just a reminder, if you're not currently subscribed and you, you would like creative ideas, you can subscribe right there and uh, sign up for those free project sheets that come out every week. I'm going to, I'm going to put that away, <laughs> say bye to the banner because sometimes it gets in the way and it blocks what you guys can see. So I wish I could move this one. That's my name, but I don't, I don't think uh, this t uh, software that I'm using allows me to move that one around, but um, I don't think it does. Let me just check. Nope. I don't think so. I'll play with that another time. Maybe we can figure it out. But uh, thanks for sharing, Stacy. I appreciate that. You might be hanging out here with me here on the uh, Sue Stampfield uh, or Susan Campfield uh, YouTube channel, or you might be over in my Facebook uh, group. Hey, gang, uh, the Sue Stampfield Facebook group. Anyone is welcome to join that and hang out with us. Or you might be over on my Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator Facebook page. Wherever you are, welcome. Yesterday in my group, it was National Lipstick Day. <laughs> and so we were uh, voting on if Stampin' Up! Colors were a lipstick, what color we would wear. I would totally be a Mary Merlot. Um, a lot of people are blushing bride, actually a lot of cherry cobblers. Um, so that was just fun. And actually I... My, we played that same game over in my um, Stampfield Stars team. That's my group of demonstrators, people who have signed up or purchased a starter kit to be demonstrators through me and are part of my Stampin' Up! family. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to flip the camera here and 
find the right button. Let's go to the desktop. Let's make sure things are right side up. They are. Yes, I think we're good. I've got a mess as usual. <laughs> I, I, you know, one package is never enough for me. I have to have three packages of the, um, oh, these are the festive pearls, actually. They're, the, the label is wrong on these. If you get these, by the way, um, don't be confused by the red and green adhesive back pearls name. Um, they were, the name was changed to festive pearls, but the packaging didn't quite catch up with that. So, um, so tonight we're going to make another step fold card. So the one that I sent out in the email was this little cutie. You guys might remember we made this on a video a few weeks back, um, the faux step fold card with the gnome dies. Um, so stinking cute. So it stands up like that. I'm going to lay it on its side so you can kind of see that stepped version or that um, why it's called a step card because this is almost like a almost like a step right like this is the front step right here and so it stands for display which is always nice and uh, staggers now the reason it's called a faux step fold card is that the original step card um, you actually took a paper trimmer and you did a partial cut here and you popped out that center section and while that did save a little bit of paper it was also a little challenging to get that cut just right and not to go too far or not far enough or whatever so personally i find this faux version way way easier so <clears throat> in the next project sheet email that's going to go out i'm going to have more faux uh, uh, step fold cards <clears throat> And for sure going to share this one, which we made a few weeks ago. Um, I may or may not do this one, or I might do the one we're making tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, uh, but those are a few of the um, step fold cards. I did want to mention, this is the Wonderful World um, designer paper. And then there's a matching stamp set. I don't think I stamped on the inside of this one. Um, that goes with it. That it was, It's uh, free with a $100 purchase for a celebration. Word on the street is that this is sold out. Um, it is no longer available as a choice in the store right now. Um, still waiting for word on Stampin' Up! if they have another shipment of the paper coming and if that will make it in time before celebration ends. I don't know. Uh, right now it is not a choice. So I just want to make sure you knew that. The other item that has also uh, um, run out of stock for celebration is this paper. These are uh, another pair of faux step cards, step fold cards we did on a previous video. This one's a little different version. It's a little bit shorter. So um, it still fits in a standard size envelope, same normal card height. There's just this back portion is a little shorter. And uh, this designer series paper is called Rings of Love. That was a celebration choice at $50. That has also ran out of stock. And again, we are waiting to find out... Um, if that will get back in time before celebration ends or not. It really just depends on, you know, that global shipping issue that we've all been struggling with a little bit here. So um, Janine says that you can also uh, just take a Sharpie and change the name on the label. That's a good point, Jean. Uh, Janine, thank you for mentioning that. Did I say Jean or Janine? It is Janine. <laughs> um, it does say, uh, yes, Carol, you're right. It says August 8th, uh, it will be available again. But I've heard conflicting on reports on whether that's actually accurate or if that's just the computer plugging in a date. So it, it's, um, I don't, we'll, I'm sure we'll get official, um, comp, uh, official information from Stampin' Up! on Monday. And just to give you guys a heads up, there is going to be another email, uh, another Project Sheet newsletter coming really quick on the heels of this one. So um I don't ever want to um, overload you with emails. And I usually don't. You're usually, I get a lot of emails saying, Susan, where is, where is our project sheet email? We haven't got it yet. You guys are so cool. Um, so I appreciate the reminders. Um, this, so I usually send about three per month, I would say. Um, but you're going to be getting one right away next week, probably on August 2nd, uh, with some more things. And so I can give you an update at that time on the latest on celebration if you are subscribed to the emails. So we're going to make a step fold card. We are going to use some paper. Um, we're going to do some embossing. Let me grab my paper bits here. Bear with me. 
I don't know why I left it stacked way over there. So we got the card base. We got the, uh, the tinted piece. That's what I call it. We got a piece to emboss here. I don't know where it's got all dirty. We've got a little, another little piece to emboss. Uh, and another piece to emboss. Woo! We're doing a lot of embossing tonight. Awesome. I love embossing. All right. So I'm going to set those aside. I, I don't know. I cut two sets just because you never know what I'm going to do, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start with showing you the score lines. Okay. And then we're going to go to embossing. And we're, I need you guys to pick. I've got two different embossing folders. I think they would both look nice. And I would love for you guys to vote on which one we're going to use. But first... Let's do our scoring. And we actually might decide on our on our designer paper for our element first, because that might help us determine which embossing folder is more appropriate. And I, I realize it's a little harder for you guys because you don't see the full picture <laughs> until the card's all done. So that is a little more challenging. So I have an 11 by four and a quarter inch piece of basic white, and I'm going to score it at one inch and at two inches. Those will form the steps. And then I'm going to score it one more time at six and a half inches. So just to reiterate, it's four and a quarter by 11, scored at one, two, and six and a half. And again, if you got the project sheet email yesterday, you can take that gnome card and, you know, just use the measurements to adapt um, this fold to whatever you would like to create. So this one I'm going to score, now this is eight and a half by two and a half. And this is going to form that tented portion, I guess I call it. <laughs> I think that's what I called it in the in the um, uh, description. Um, this tented portion um, is eight and a half by two and a half, and we're going to score it at three inches. Sure, we are Sue at three inches. So eight and a half, two and a half, by two and a half, scored at three inches. All right. So that's it for our scoring. Let's put our scoreboard away. And hmm, let's let's dive right into the die cutting and then we'll do the embossing. Yeah, I think that's the way I want to go. So tonight we're going to use um, a set of dies that are from the mini catalog. Let me bring them in. Um, they are part of the Gingham Cottage Suite. Uh, for this particular card, we're actually only using the dies. They're called the Country Wreath Dies. Uh, I think I can see them a little bit bigger on page 12. Let's look. Oh, wait. No, that's not right. Da -da -da. They're back here somewhere. Anyway, I'll show them to you right. Oh, here they are. It went right to them. What are the odds? So they come as a bundle with a really cute stamp set, and we will be using that on future projects. I especially like this textured leaf uh, wreath here. But for this project, we're actually going to just use the dies. So I have those here. And I am just going to, oh, we got another Tuscan uh, a viewer who lives in Green Valley. And Linda also lives in Tucson. Tucson. Did I say Tuscan? <laughs> Tucson, Arizona. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I think I need a nap. <laughs> all right i am just zipping back you got you just got the wonderful world tape paper phew betty i'm so glad you got it uh yes i'm glad you got plenty of those dsps okay so i don't see any questions so far so we're gonna just blaze ahead so i'm gonna open these up now this is an extensive die set right you can see all the options here. Um, you've got some autumn like oak leaves here. These are standalone dies. Standalone means it doesn't match up with a stamp set. They're just, you die cut them and use them. And we're using, those are the kinds we're using tonight. Um, we got these, um, I don't know, leaf uh, leafy stems. I guess there are four of those that are identical. These match up with stamps. They're also oak leaves. These are some flower buds, even a little acorn. Um, also stamps uh, matches the stamp. There's a spider stamp. So it's just kind of a nice all season set, but we're going to use the standalone dies tonight and not use the stamp set. Like I said, so this is a two part wreath. We've got a, a little bit wider and a little bit skinnier wreath. And then we're going to grab this bow. Um, there's also a bow that uh, die cuts the stamped bow. We're going to use the one that just does the, 
is a standalone bow. I don't know if standalone is the right word. I'm hoping that, hoping you know what I'm talking about there. So now we need to pick our designer series paper. So, hey, Kathy, you're not late. You're just in time. We're just getting going. So our first choice for this evening is which pattern of the texture chic designer series paper should we use for our wreath? We can use this pattern, which is kind of like, uh, uh, I think it's technically Mango Melody and Blushing Bride, but it's it's pinks and kind of pinks and yellows. It could sort of be an autumn look. Or this one, which is a deep dark green, that's the Evening Evergreen with the gold in it. Or this one, which is the lighter green, the Soft Succulent. So do we want a wreath to be light colored, which would kind of be more like a floral or a fall like hay kind of look <laughs> or do we want it to be a deep dark green kind of like a eucalyptus wreath or do we want it to be the soft subtle greens with the hints of gold in in the um, soft succulent so one two or three let me know your vote on which which way we're going to go there brooke burger is in green valley too <laughs> Or maybe she's saying her son and daughter are in Green Valley. Mm -hmm. I'm getting lots of votes here. They're coming in hot and furious. So, so I am going to go ahead and eliminate this one. I do see a few votes for that, but but it's uh, it's definitely the less chosen one. And now I have to go in and figure out between two and three which one has more votes. So, it looks like three. It looks like you guys like the darker one. I did see quite a few votes for the, the like, uh, oh no, this is three. I'm sorry. Yes, number three. <laughs> I forgot my own numbering system. We're going to go with the lighter one. Okay, excellent. All right, we're going to go this route. And then for our bow, we're actually going to die cut our bow out of some of this um, vintage gold paper. It is um, on the same page in the annual catalog as the Texture Chic um, paper, or it's in the back with all the specialty papers. And it's, uh, it's just a real vintage looking gold. It looks like it's sort of tarnished and uh, has a lot of texture to it, which is why it goes so good with that texture suite. So, uh, so that's what we're doing here. Let's bring in our machine and we'll get everything cut up here. So, before we do that, I think we should decide on our embossing folder. All right, so we've decided that we're using this paper for our wreath and that we're cutting both wreaths. They layer on top of each other and we're going to do them out of the same color. Um, and then just so you know, the other side of this paper is kind of a weathered wood look. It's pretty cool, actually. And then uh, we're going to do our bow out of this. So those are that's our kind of our colors that we're working with. So we've got two embossing folders that I grabbed out of my stash here. Um, you'll This will be a surprise to nobody. <laughs> the quatrefoil tile embossing folder, which I absolutely cannot get enough of. Oh my goodness, you guys, I can't leave it alone. Um, we use that on Crafternoon um, with um, our, our uh, pop out bendy fun fold card. Um, so that's what that pattern looks like. Or the other option is the timber 3D, which is a wood grain effect. So T or Q, let me know your vote. T or Q, let me know which one you would think would go better with our pretty green wreath. You guys do choose well, Linda. <laughs> I agree. So Q meaning quatrefoil tile or T meaning timber. Mm, it's pretty evenly split. It's like we're off to the races. They're kind of, uh, uh, <laughs> so far every Q has a T against it. So they're uh, crossing each other out. Oh, I'm seeing a whole pile of Qs out, but then the whole pile of Ts show up. Oh gosh, I, boy, it's super close. You guys, it is super duper close, but I think, I think the timber just edged it out. Uh, keep in mind, I see votes from people both on Facebook 
and on YouTube, you probably just see the votes for the people that are on the channel that you're on. So if you're like, boy, Susan can't count. Well, you're right on that, but <laughs> you also don't see all the votes. So, all right, let's bring in our machine here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I got bossing stuff from our last video. I've got these fun leaf things. Oh my goodness, so many fun things on my desk. I just need more time in the day, right? That's why I love our Saturday night and Tuesday night crafting sessions because I always have then that time to craft, right? So I'm grabbing, let's go ahead and just start with the, let's get the embossing done out of the way. Let's get the embossing out of the way first. Boy, that didn't come out, right? Um, so we've got the Timber 3D embossing folder here and it's 3D. So I've got the number four plate and then I just have the number one platform. So I need to find some paper bits. I need to strive to get the, not only the right pieces of paper to have them go the right direction. Of course, your wood grain is a bit directional. So this one is going to go on the card that way. And this little bit, sorry, you can't see that. Let me slide back a bit. Um, this one is going to go on the card across the front. So I'm just making sure they line up. And then this piece is too big to fit right now. So I'll do that one in a moment. So let's close this up. We're going to send this through. Clunk. All right, let's see how we did here. <gasps> the moment of truth. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm always excited to open the embossing folder and see the magic, right? And sorry about the ring light reflection we're getting there. So I'm going to peel off our pieces here and look at that beautiful wood texture. So this one is with this wood grain that you guys have selected. It's going to kind of look like a door, isn't it? Which makes me think of our Crafternoon um, door project. Okay, I got to think about this really quick here. All right, so I need the, this is four and a quarter by four. And the four inch side is the width of the card. And this is the longer part. So I want the wood grain to go that way. Okay. With a directional folder like this one, you do have to take a minute. If you have multiple pieces of embossing on your project to decide which direction you want to go. The quatrefoil tile is not directional. So that one would not that and I apologize if I'm jiggling the camera. It does happen. All right, so let's see the magic on this one. There we go. All right, so we've got those embossed. I'm going to set this aside and, and I will go over those um, dimensions uh, when we get to putting the card together. So I'm going to add in, so going platform one, I'm going to add in the thin die adapter, which is number two, and a not very pretty scarred up <laughs> cutting plate, number three. And then which one do we vote for? Went for the lighter one, right? Okay, so that's the soft succulent. So I'm going to lay those down, and then I'm going to put the dies right on top. So can you see how this one is has a thicker metal? And this one has a thinner middle. This one's going to be the bottom layer. This one will be the top. And so I'm just going to pop them on here. Um, I cut these pieces three by three. You can see they are plenty big enough. You could probably get away with, um, I would say, two and three quarters by two and three quarters would easily work as well. Um, where's our other die? I know it's floating around here. Wouldn't be a stew stamp fill video if I didn't lose something, right? So we're going to cut our bow out of that vintage. And let's go ahead and put our last plate on, number three, on top here. One advantage with the vintage gold paper is you don't need to worry about having a plate with some marks in it on top and then it will score into it like you do with the shiny foils because this one is a matte finish, so it doesn't pick up all those little marks. And it's lightweight. It's more like a designer paperweight than uh, almost a cardstock, which is what the other ones are like. All right, I believe we are done with our uh, machines. I'm gonna set that aside. Let's uh, 
Let's see how we did here. Where to put things. <laughs> All right, so here's our bow. Isn't that gorgeous? So much easier than tying a bow, right, guys? <laughs> Boom, we just die cut it. How awesome is that? And then we've got our wreath we're going to pull off here now. I should know better than to just throw dies on my desk because we all know what happens. They they go missing, don't they? So let's put them back where they belong, except for this one is hanging on to that wreath. So I need to pull it out first. All right, I got a tool for that, don't I? Let's grab my tool here. And we're just going to roll out those extra bits. And... There we go pull that right out so there's the lower level of our wreath so when you're die cutting and if you have two pieces if one of them has less of the gold elements in it you can yeah I wish all my bows look like that too <laughs> um, you can uh, use that for the back because that's mostly going to be covered up um, I do like to get all the little extra pieces out of the paper before I put it back on. So we've got that. And let's pull this up. I'm going to just close the door here. People in my house are being noisy. Okay, here we go. Let's pull this up. And we're just going to roll the extra pieces off. All right, really pretty. You guys, you guys picked good. All right, let's set this aside. Good thing I have a chair in my stamp room because I can put all the stuff on the chair. <laughs> I don't need to sit in it. I just need a place to put stuff, right? So we've got a, the bottom part of our wreath. We've got the layer that goes on top of it. And let me uh, kind of zoom up here. You can see the little flecks of gold, really soft and pretty. And then our bow will just go right there to decorate our wreath. So let's uh, put this on the magnet sheet with the others. Now the magnet sheets don't come with the Stampin' Up! dies. I guess I should mention that. I do get those from an outside source. I buy them from a place called Stampin' Storage, which happens to be here in Minnesota, although they believe they ship anywhere. All right, so we've got our piece here. So we're going to fold in half on the, I don't know, I get, I, when I did the tutorial for the, um, the gnome, I said it's mostly in the center because <laughs> it's not exactly in the center, but it's most more, more in the center than these guys are, right? And let's grab a goat bone folder here. I have a lot of bone folders. I always end up getting the grubby one for the video. All right, so we've got that um, creased. And now we're going to fold back on the next one. We're going to go the opposite direction on the next score line. And I'm going to crease on that. And then the next one is going to go the opposite way again. So it's like an accordion fold back and forth, back and forth. And that forms that little front step so that our card will stand up. Okay, I'm going to show it to you from the side there. And then now we need that tented piece. So, um, sure. Linda is asking uh, if I have the hues of the dyes that go with the hues of happiness suite. Um, I do. And in fact, I do have a video, Linda, where I use that spiral uh, cut die because it is so cool <laughs> um, and so uh, if you pop me an email my email address is susan at suestampfield.com or is it right there susan at suestampfield.com I'll be happy to uh, send that your way let's go back here I think that's one of the uh, project sheets. When people sign up for my project sheets for the first time, they automatically get that one in their inbox. Okay, so we have this piece that was eight and a half by two and a half, and we squirted it at three. We're going to fold it on that three inch um, portion. And before we attach this tented part, we're going to go ahead and stick on our, um, our embossed piece, our wood grain piece here. So in the this version, instead of doing a piece the whole width, I just did strips on the side. You can do it either way. When it stands up, you can kind of see where the 
where that ends. This one, it will be continuous. So it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, kind of personal preference. Oh boy, this, ooh, getting low on the sticky stuff, you guys. That one's empty. <laughs> I might have to reload here. Darn it. Sorry, I should have checked that before went on. Well, there's enough to get started here, but it's looking, I'm seeing the red. Can you see the red in there? Red's not good. <laughs> red means almost gone. All right. So I've got some adhe tape, uh, adhesive run all the way around there. And that is just going to go right inside here. And I've got that pretty even, so I'm trying to do about the same border around. The one at the bottom is maybe a little narrower, but that one's not going to show, like, at all. Um, so if you had to pick one that didn't matter, it would be the bottom one. And then we're going to take this piece that tents, and we're going to attach it to this front step. So we're just going to run some tape here, some adhesive with our seal. And we're going to pop this on the front step more or less in the center hopefully more rather than less <laughs> oh, that is not such a season oh my goodness can you guys even see that because i'm i'm focusing on i'm not looking through the camera so that i can get it on right <laughs> all right there so we've got that attached to the front and i'm going to keep it folded up like this and I'm going to flip this guy out. This is going to attach to the back. And I'm just going to keep my card folded like that. And flip this back. Place some adhesive here. And then fold that flat. Okay. And now we have this step fold card that pops up. All right. So let's go ahead and add our other wood paneling here <laughs> such wood wood you like to use the glue peggy yeah um definitely definitely uh, multi-purpose liquid glue is a really good option um i kind of have a, a love-hate relationship with liquid glue I, I do a lot better with it than i used to but sometimes i get too much <laughs> even now even now i get too much so um but, but for some things, that's absolutely the best option. So all it's like whatever works for you, go with that, right? That's, that's the winner. Um, we're going to go ahead and, oh, am I going to have enough for this card, you guys? I might have enough for this card. I'm not being very stingy, am I? I'm just slathering it on. But you know what? I've got refills. just don't want to have to take the time. We're deep in our crafting fun here. I don't want to stop and have to reload. <laughs> All right, so we've got that step. We've got that wood grain. And it's time to put our wreath together. So we're going to attach this together. Now, this is a really good time where the liquid glue is a great choice. You also could use uh, glue dots. You would just want to... Um, See if my glue will cooperate. I should have a paper. Is this making anyone else nervous that I do not have a paper under this to catch any any globs of glue where I miss? It's making me nervous. I'm just being lazy. Um, you could fold up glue dots. Um, so like fold them in half and uh, do those instead. And I just put dots of glue. Let me bring that up a little bit closer. So I literally, I didn't really even squeeze. I just tapped little dots of glue uh, around the, the narrow inside part. I don't care about the leaves. In fact, I don't really want them flat. I want them kind of up and fluffy. In fact, you can even separate these leaves if you want a really kind of a feathered look on your wreath. You can kind of go around with your finger and separate that little border. Um, totally up to you. And what do you want to do that? Let's try it since I've started it here. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit, not too much. We'll kind of give it a fluffier look maybe, huh? All right. And don't worry. Oh. Uh, 
dropped my glue wreath on the carpet, of course, glue side down, which means I probably picked up some dog hair, but I think we're good. Um, don't worry about the glue drying because the glue dry is sticky. So it's, it'll still stick. You don't need to worry about it drying off, you know, drying up or whatever. So I've got that layered on there. And now on the back, I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on here. Um, this is a very tiny surface that I'm sticking to. So I'm going to go tiny dimensionals. <laughs> so we're going to get our minis out. And I'm actually going, oh, hey, that one's, that one's like a live grenade there. It doesn't have any paper on it. And this wants to stick right to me. Um, I'm actually going to cut some of these in half. So I'm going to go mini, mini, <laughs> super mini. <laughs> you don't want to glue it. No, I don't want to glue the card to the table, Janine. And I have to say, it would not be the first time that that's happened. That's embarrassing. I shouldn't admit things like that, right? <laughs> All right, let's pull these off. And you see how they're just teeny weeny little dimensional bits here. You can also, if you don't have the minis, you can add this is a perfect application for the edges um, on your full size ones. There's some little skinny borders that you absolutely could cut into little bits here. Um, and it's almost wide enough that I could have used uh, a full one. I just didn't want it to show. You know what I mean? I think the minis fit in a little bit better. I'm just going to go with four on there. You could load up more if you want. I'm gonna, the hardest part is going to get the backs off, is getting those backings off, right? Let's pull them off here. All right. Come on. Come on. Okay, I think we're all sticky here. So we can add a wreath to the front of our card here. And then don't forget our bow. This one, I'm just going to attach it with a, a glue dot. Actually, you know what? Let's, what the heck? What the heck? Let's put a couple mini dimensionals on there. Why not? Dimension is always a good thing for maybe when it comes to postage, right? But even still, I think this card will sit flat enough. I just want to make sure I get the mini dimensional in far enough that it's not going to show from the front. Make sure I'm not... <laughs> I just want to make you feel better by dropping the wreath on the floor. Yeah, that's it. I totally did it on purpose. So, hey, Butchie Gwen. All right, so we're going to put our bow kind of little kitty wampus there going off to the side. Of course, if you prefer it, if you're more of a like a straight on person, you absolutely could. Ooh, this is coming up. You could do it um, more at the bottom. I'm going to do it at the side and it's stuck. It's not coming off now. It's done. <laughs> it's there. So I want to kind of fluff my wreath a little bit here. Nobody wants a flat wreath, right? Heck no. All right. So we've got our wreath on there. And now we have room for a sentiment at the bottom. I was thinking, what was I thinking about? <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to grab. I was thinking I didn't die cut any paper for this. All right, you guys are going to think I'm so boring, but. <laughs> I'm going to use my favorite, favorite go-to set. Does anyone that watches my videos know which greeting set I am going to grab? Except for I don't see it. Probably because it's on my desk because I cannot stop using it. Oh, well, maybe I won't use that one. Uh, oh, I found it. <laughs> I found it. It is the go to greetings. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one though. Hang on, hang on. Oops, I grabbed the right set. The go to greetings stamp set. Um, now, this kind of does remind me of a door, which makes me think of our craft and fun fold again. So, I did this version with the leaves of holly um, bundle. And on the inside, we've got our, you know, pop out bendy, of course on the wobble, so it wobbles, uh, but I use the uh, Bows of Holly Designer Series paper 
but you easily could do a wreath on the front of this on the belly band instead of the holly frame. You know, if you wanted to use this set instead of the holly one, and they could do like a second wreath on the inside. Uh, let's see, I might even have, let's see if I have a wreath floating around on my desk that we could just see what that would look like. Um, I probably would do it in green. This one is cherry cobbler, so it wouldn't really stand out very much, but you totally could do a, a wreath on this fold. So this is part of the Crafternoon. That uh, tutorial bundle is available on my blog, suestampfield.com, uh, to purchase. So that is a purchasable item, or if you place a $50 order, you got a packet for me to make one of those cards, and you got the tutorial for free. Yay, free. And let's see, what reading do I want here? In fact, what's today? It's almost the end of, it's the 30th of June, uh, July, right? So we've got one more day tomorrow, July 31st. So uh, if you placed an order in July, then you're going to get a packet for next month's Crafternoon. If you haven't had a chance to place an order yet and you want that packet for next month, you've got until tomorrow to, to get that done. And it's uh, if the order is $50 or more, then you are in for Crafternoon. No need for a host code. Um, I'm thinking, thinking of you, right? How about thinking of you? I use that one a lot. Unless you rather do, you want to do happy birthday or thinking of you. You guys let me know what you think. You have that greeting set too, Joe. Isn't that a great one? Oh, yeah, you guys know me. Go to greetings. Yeah, look at you. You guys know me. You're all on it. All right. Uh, happy birthday or thinking of you. Oh, today's Betty's birthday. Happy birthday, Betty. Happy birthday to you. How fun is that? Well, I think we should do a happy birthday for Betty. Let's do a happy birthday. I'm not going to sing because <laughs> I don't want to torture you guys at all. And uh, singing was not one of the gifts I was blessed. blessed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to paper crafting for sure. All right. So I've got my happy birthday here. I am using the smallest one. And I'm going to grab my soft succulent. I really hope this fits in the die that I was going to use. Well, there's one way to find out, right? If it doesn't, we can do thinking of you. And we could stamp happy birthday on the inside, right? All right. So I have a way bigger paper than I need. But I've got my happy birthday sentiment there. Of course, you can also emboss this in gold. I'm not giving you guys the choice because you would totally say, yes, yeah, Susan, emboss it in gold. <laughs> and I'm let that stuff out right now. So, well, actually, I probably do from our last video where we embossed in copper, didn't we? All right, so I'm going to pull this die out and let's see if that fits. <gasps> it's perfect. Of course it is. All right, I'm bumping the camera. So sorry. I'm actually going to raise it up a skosh. And let's grab our die cutting machine one last time. Sorry, I guess we could have die cut this early on. All right, we need to get rid of some bits here. We've got excess stuff that we don't need anymore. I'm going to pitch it. I know I threw I threw scraps away. There might have been a teeny tiny little usable something on there, but sometimes you gotta let it go, right? Okay, what are we doing here? We're gonna do our happy birthday in soft succulents, preferably close to the center. Let me grab a post-it note. I think we used this one last time, but it still works. It's still sticky. It's, uh, okay. Gotta find to find where I laid the top plate because it's it's clear, right? So it doesn't always isn't always obvious where it ends up. Right. And I'm gonna caution you, I might be moving that wreath up from where I placed it based on where we end up putting our happy birthday. So you've been warned. <laughs> And if I can't get it to move, well, then it's staying right where it is, right? Okay, so we've got our happy birthday. Let's bring our card back in. And we can put our happy birthday down here. We can put it on this section to kind of cover up where that gap is between the two. I kind of like that idea. I think that's what I did on... 
no, I didn't do that on this one. I did it farther down, but I think I did do that on some versions. Um, yeah, I think I like that. The other option that we could do, happy birthday, Betty. <laughs> um, the happy birthday could actually go at the top and we could do a ribbon at the bottom. Just playing, guys. I'm just playing. This is the soft succulent. I love this ribbon, you guys. It's just amazing. And I know people were talking about having trouble um, doing bows, but this is, could just be a knot situation. Or, or, there's always an or. <laughs> we could do a gold ribbon like this one. This might be too brassy, though. <gasps> might be too shiny. Is there such a thing as too shiny? Might not match our vintage. Lower. I think you're right. It says RN. I'm not sure who that is. Feel free to pop your name in the comments if, you, if you're comfortable with that. Um, we might have... So here's the gold. I think definitely gold would be the way to go if we were going to do a ribbon, but I don't think we have to. I think we're going to just put this down here. And uh, do I want to, you know, I need, I feel like I need more glue on this. I just didn't get enough glue on it. I shouldn't lift off like that. It's sticking over here, but not over here. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue. And I thought I was playing dangerously when I was doing it on my desk. And I'm doing it on the card. Holy moly. <laughs> All right. That looks a little better. Let's just give that a gentle little press down. All right. That should stay better now. And then this guy is going to go right down here. So I feel like... This could go up a little bit, but I don't know if I can get it off without ripping. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right. I think I want it up a little higher. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Sorry. I am, I am picky. I'm going to take two dimensionals. I'm going to get my greeting on here and then I'm going to remove those little bits of dimensional pieces and reattach this a little bit higher. I had it a little too low. So to remove those, I'm going to grab a product that we no longer sell, um, but it is available in other sources. This is an adhesive eraser. Um, it's just a gum eraser that will take any adhesive bits right off your project, which is super handy. Just got to be patient and go slow and it does come off, especially when you have a textured wood grain <laughs> that you've got it down into. All right, let's try again. And this time, you know what, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go glue dots here. <gasps> what? She just changed it. I did. Just changed it up. Either one, either one works. Where's my take your pick tool, guys? Ah, found it. All right, I better not change my mind this time because these are going to stick. Although a lot of times when you stick to embossing, you can get it up a little bit easier because it's a rougher surface. All right. Oh, they're so sticky, you guys. It's not going to go anywhere for sure. All right. There we go. A little bit higher than I had it before now that I have that greeting. I just kind of wanted to split the difference a little bit more. So simple, elegant, happy birthday card recipient can proudly display. Oh, I think there was one little bit of uh, 
dimensional stuck on there still. There we go. Now it's gone. <laughs> that the recipient can proudly display on their mantle or table or office, office desk, right? And there we have our card. You guys did good. Um, okay, I'm looking over here on my table. I'm looking over here on the side. And I'm seeing some embellishments. Oh, I might have to do it, you guys. These are the brushed metallic adhesive back dots. Just a little, little something, something to add on here. If these are too big for your liking, you absolutely could go with the uh, festive pearls that we were looking at earlier. They're a little bit smaller size. I did use the smaller of the brushed metallic dots. But that just adds a little extra texture. You wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. Um, but then it kind of just stands out a little bit on the little berries. So there we go. We did it. You guys did great. So that is with the, the timber, which is really, really, really attractive. I really like it. Well done. <laughs> well done. We did good. All right. I'm going to flip the camera here. I'm going to untuck my hair. It's behind my ears. <laughs> there we go. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, that was really fun. And I hope uh, 113 yesterday and only 102 today. Jean, that is just darn, darn hot. Wow. Uh, you're in the Northwest, right? So uh, fantastic, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'm just scanning to make sure I didn't miss any comments. So um Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take care. And I hope you can join me on Tuesday, August 2nd at 7.30 p.m. Central Time for another crafting adventure together. So take care, everyone. Have a great night and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.